Well, today we are back in Uma and we are starting to lay out where the structure is going to go and where the floor is going to go and where the bulkheads are going to go. Because the team of guys are getting ready to do all the glass work. All the material has been ordered. It should be here in a couple of days, but they need to know where they're putting it. So first we need to check to see if they set our boat down level-ish. Uh, because we have a laser level, so it's going to be really nice to sort of put it in the center and string a line all the way around the hull where the bulkheads are going to go so we know that the bulkheads are all going to be plumb um, to the water line, which currently they're not. Our main bulkhead is off by about 10 centimeters to the water line, so it's not even perpendicular. Um, but it's going to be a lot easier if the boat's level to begin with because then we can just use the laser level as a level because it self levels. If not, we can lock this one off and then sort of manually align it to the center line of the boat, but it would be much easier if the boat was level. So first we're gonna to check to see how out of level it is and if we should just correct it or if we can just make do with what we have. And then um, we'll just get the model out on the iPad and start going through and measuring and marking where all of the ribs are gonna go, where all the structure's gonna go, where the stringers are gonna go, and where the bulkheads are gonna go, so that hopefully next week um, the glass work can start. Exciting times. This laser level makes me so happy. I've used the singular laser level before when we were doing uh, construction and housing, but I've never used like a three axis one. It's just so cool to be able to like line it up on the rudder and line it up on the bow and just see how crooked our boat actually is. <laughs> yeah, so they definitely didn't set us down straight side to side because it's lined up on everything that looks centered on the ceiling, the mast and the dodger is perfect and the rudder's pretty good but the build is off by like four centimeters. Yeah, so we're definitely been set down like a little bit port heavy. So we're trying to get the mast center and the rudder center to be the center because nothing else actually really matters. As long as the mast, the rudder, and theoretically the keel are all in the same alignment, the rest of the boat we can like level off of that. Because those are like the three things that actually affect the performance of the boat. It's not off by that much actually. So yeah, right now we have like the laser level and it's lined up with the bilge and the rudder and the keel and the mast step on center. But it's not lined up. It's off by um, half an inch. Or like 1.2 centimeters. We also need to check if it's level fore and aft, and for that we need to go outside and throw the level on the water line. The factory water line we can still see, um, or the water line that we've sort of trimmed the boat to, which is a little bit stern heavy. We put uh, about five centimeters on the stern, which raised the bow up a bit, and this boat sailed a lot better. So we're probably going to level everything to the new water line, and then when we repaint the boat, we're going to change that water line as well. It just sails better, with a bit more stern heavy. So, so let's go outside. I think we're going to put the laser level up on the truck. Table would work. You're all right. Let's use the table. I have a good idea. We can use the table. <laughs> also, we have a table now. Got a great idea. Let's use a table. Came up with that all on my own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not up a bit, not up a bit. What's the problem? Um, it's really bright and we got the cheap laser level so it doesn't work outside very well. That's what the problem is. So it's really hard to see. They got like this little reflector thing that kind of helps a little bit. But it's still hard to see. It's like here somewhere. Barely. 
So uh, you can see like this section here. This has been our water line since we took everything out of the boat. This line here is where the factory water line is. That's where we originally painted. It had like a red bootstripe and we painted it. No, it had a blue bootstripe. So we painted it red, we painted it black. And then we painted over it with anti-foul. And then for the last like three years of sailing, we've been up here. So we've been like six centimeters up from the factory water line, like fully loaded, ready to cruise. And then once we hauled everything out, we were about eight centimeters below the factory water line, which is like 15 centimeters below where we've been when we're fully loaded. So you can see like all three water lines here. And right now the laser levels lined up on our original factory water line in the middle of the boat. Well, not quite in the middle of the boat. It's the middle of the boat's back here somewhere. But we're four centimeters low in the front and six centimeters high in the back. So we're actually not sitting level fore and aft either. And that's the tricky one to fix because that requires like the lift to put us back. the plan well the plan for today is to strip out all the deck hardware from the boat because we're going to be doing the lamination soon and part of the lamination is we're going to be rebedding the deck joints so anything that is on the hull in the deck needs to be removed and also we're going to be redoing all the the deck work we're going to be repainting it maybe putting some different type of decking instead of the kiwi grip we might be doing some plastic or something and yeah so everything needs to be removed anyway and so this week we have our patron sana she's visiting and so she's going to be put into work <laughs> <laughs> i'm ready <laughs> yeah right. yeah let's go yeah so today's gonna be a good work day Or grab onto something. <laughs> That's not a boat's gonna look different at the end of today. Yeah, the boat's gonna be completely naked. This is coming off. All the stanchions are coming off. Chain so. plates are coming off. <laughs> Passerelle's coming Passerelle. off. Passerelle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need that up here. So underneath uh, our deck joint, we glassed the exterior of it in Guatemala many years ago, and that made the boat significantly stiffer, but the underside of it is still kind of shoddy. We didn't have access to it at the time, but we're gonna be taking all the deck hardware out so we can get rid of all the stainless hardware that pokes down through the deck. And then when we do the glass work, it'll be able to come up through the hull deck joint and glass the deck again. So like the inside and the outside of the hull deck joint will both be glassed and they'll be super strong and durable. Um, and a lot of the stainless hardware on deck is going to be either replaced or renewed because it's like half metric and half freedom units. And so hopefully we can put it all back as just metric. So that's what's happening today. We're taking out all the deck hardware. Um, and removing all the other bits and pieces, bilge pump and through hulls and dodger and anything else that we can take off the boat, we're taking off the boat. Um, so that's the plan for this weekend. Oh, Including the chain plates, because this knee is getting cut out and we're glassing in a whole different structure. So a lot of uh, unbolting and removing. Um, I should just call this episode Stripping Uma. <laughs> Sweet. 
One down. Seven more to go. Well, we have had this Dodger on Uma now for almost five years, and it's fantastic. Mike did such a good job building it. We are definitely keeping it. But in order to make sure it doesn't get damaged in the construction process, we're taking it off so we can store it. So it'll be nice and new again when we put it back on. So that's what I'm working on next. Tricky part is this handle, these handles on the side are actually what's giving it that tension. So I gotta take those out in order to get the canvas off, in order to get the frame off. So it's a little bit more complex than just folding it down. Only problem is some of these zippers are corroded. So that's like a total of 80, 82, yeah, 82 bolts, plus the bat pulpits, plus the cleats, plus all the extra bits and pieces that we have going through. So I think at least a hundred. We have at least a hundred screws and bolts going through the deck of this boat that we're removing today. It's exhausting. <laughs> but we're doing progress though. All the cinches are now out. Um, the Genoa tracks are about to come out. I have a few, a few things left. And we're good. It's a bit <laughs> concerning when things come out easier than you expect them to. Oh, that's all that was holding it on? Actually, that blue's not too bad. It's the that blue that got like weather faded, that got lighter, that got bad. Nice. I feel like we're done for the day. Good morning everyone, we are back again for round two and Sana is back to help us as well and today we're going to try to remove all the through holes because everything in the boat is changing, the layout is changing so we're going to be moving the through holes anyway and ideally all the new through holes are going to be above the waterline kind of like what they do on catamarans, we stole that idea but it's going to be quite difficult because we know they're really solidly installed so we might need to cut some stuff off. Lots to do and hopefully by the end of this week the boat's gonna be ready for its new lamination. 
So we installed these through holes while we were at Just Catamarans in Florida, and they work great. They're plastic, so there's no like corrosion issues. Uh, but they're glued in with probably Sika Flex, but it may have been like 5200. Um, and so there's no way we're going to be able to like twist them out without breaking them. So uh, the plan is we're going to cut these out. Hopefully we can save them, but we've got one, two, three, four, five, six to cut out today. So where Sona is working right now is where, uh, oh, this is going to be loud, but this is where we're going to have our little extra bunk. So she said she's comfortable. That's good. Because it means it's a perfect aft cabin. <laughs> I'm sorry for the noise. I mean, it's boat work. It's pretty loud in here. Guys, it's been such a productive couple of days. It was really nice to have Sana visiting and helping us with this project while she was in town. But now we are all pretty tired. So we're gonna call it a day and Den and I are going to head back to our office, which is our storage unit. And Sana is leaving tonight. So thank you again, Sana, for visiting and for lending us your pair of hands. And uh, let us know when you're back in town. But in the meantime, I think, uh, that is it for today. We just got a text from the shipyard. They are ready to move our boat, um, even though it's like the end of the day. So we are rushing back. We were in sort of like a temporary storage uh, location because we weren't really sure how long we were going to be out uh, of the water. But since we're going to be staying at this yard for a while, uh, they're going to move us into the back into a more permanent location, which is good news because it means we can make sure the boat is level this time before all the glass work goes in, which just makes life so much easier. Luckily, we remembered this morning that our solar panels are perfectly level to the water line because every time it rains, that little tiny groove on the edge of our solar panels would hold enough water that when you step on one side of the boat or the other, all the water comes sloshing off of it and comes dumping down to the cockpit. So uh, we're not gonna need to do anything complicated with a laser level or a water level or using a garden hose to try to figure out where the level is. We can just throw uh, my four foot level on the solar panels and just use those to check to see how level the boat's gonna be. So that'll get us close enough. I mean, it's all, close enough but we just need a good foundation that we can start from so uh yeah we're heading back to the yard now
On the stern, you can really see the original copper uh, epoxy that we put on and the line from it, it's right here. And so that's an even easier mark to measure from. And it's right at like 194, which means we are within half a centimeter of being level fore and aft to the original water line of the boat. Now, was the original water line level? I don't know, who knows, it's a boat. There's really no way of actually knowing, but it's gonna give us a better foundation um, to build everything off from the inside. Cause then we can just take our laser level, which does like both verticals and a horizontal, and we can set it down on anything and get where the bulkheads are gonna be or line up cabinetry or anything like that. So it's nice that we got to move. It's nice that they took their time and like let us level the boat just perfectly. Cause it's gonna make the rest of our build here so much easier. The proper way to do this is to get a clear hose and put like colored water in and use that to level. And when we paint the water line onto the boat, we might do that. We don't have that set up right now. And we had about a 15 minute notice that they were moving our boat. So um, this is good enough. And it's significantly better than it was because over where we were before, uh, when I did the same measuring all the way around, we we're off by about 15 centimeters fore and aft. So that would have been a nightmare. One centimeter is fine. For those of you playing at home, that's about half an inch. Well, it turns out they're going to be leaving Uma on the slings tonight. So we came back with the laser level <laughs> so that we can triple and quadruple check if the boat's actually leveled so that if we need to do any type of adjustments, we still have time in the morning. And now yeah, this is kind of like here. very distracting. <laughs> cool part is our, our laser level has a magnet on it. Since they left the crane here. We can just, oh, that's a little bit too low. It's like, it's perfect in the back, it's perfect in the middle, and in the front it's off by like a centimeter and a half. So our water line is here, and the laser says levels there, so it's off by, I had a tape measure with me, I don't know what I did with it. It's off by two and a half centimeters, maybe, on the front, so the bow could be technically two and a half centimeters up. Um, but it's perfect in the middle and it's pretty much perfect in the back. So like, I don't think we're really going to mess with it too much. It's better that the bow's a little bit low because then when we glass the floor in, if she floats actually on her water line, which she probably won't, the floor will slope a little bit aft, but I think that that's fine. Uh, let's check side to side and see if that Need our own tripod after all. We'll just use one of these. It's gonna be a bit low. Well, that looks pretty nice. That's center of the chain plate. Pretty much center of the boat. It's not quite centered on the keel. I think it's about as close as we're gonna be able to get it with the tools that we have. So I think we're pretty much good to go. I think it's gonna be a good foundation to work from. You wanna check the inside real quick? Mm -hmm. sweet part is we can throw this level down anywhere and then we can just mark where our bulkheads need to be because it's throwing up a perfectly plumb like transverse line for the bulkhead 
as well as a horizontal line for like countertops or cabinetry or like where we need to glass stuff into the hall. It's gonna make building in here so much easier. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. Cool, I'm glad we came back. Pack it up now? Yep. Cool.